Hi, I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks, and today is Braising 101 with short ribs. Chef Frank, what is braising? Great question, let me tell you. Braising is where we take a large cut of meat that is usually tough, that you can't just grill and slice and eat. And we cook it in a moist heat environment, which means with liquid. In braising, we want it to be about two thirds to three quarters up the way of piece of meat. And we cook it low and slow until it's tender and delicious. The cuts of meat that are usually used in braises tend to be a little less expensive. These were cuts that the butcher really couldn't sell or he had to sell for a really cheap price. Nowadays, meat's a little more expensive, but they tend to be cheaper cuts because you have to take the time to cook them. Today we're doing short ribs. I love short ribs. They're a delicious piece of meat. All you have to do is have a little patience and learn how to work with them. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna show you the technique on how to make these short ribs delicious. A lot of people get braising and stewing confused. They're both kind of the same thing, except for the fact that when you braise, you are using larger cuts of meat, so like shanks, like short ribs. You're covering them about three quarters of the way and you're cooking them until they're tender. And then you're straining the sauce out and serving it with that sauce, okay? When you stew, it's smaller cuts of meat that are totally submerged in the liquid and the vegetables or the aromatics that you put in there are served with the meat. So that's the main difference, size of cut, and how much liquid. So in front of me I have two types of short ribs. One with the bone, one without the bone. And I'm gonna tell you why I choose what I choose. I like short ribs on the bone, no doubt. Whenever you put the bone in, in a braise, you definitely have a better flavor. But my main issue with short ribs that you buy in the supermarket, they're really light on meat, heavy on bone, right? And when I'm paying 10, 12, 13 bucks a pound for something, I don't wanna buy something that's basically inedible like the bone. So what I always opt for is boneless short ribs, which are really basically just the short plate, which is just a little lower than the short ribs. It's more from the belly section. It's got almost the same texture. It has the same flavor as a short rib minus the bone and it's bigger bang for your buck. So always ask your butcher for boneless short ribs or short plate. That's what you want. If you like the bone for presentation, great. I think it makes a beautiful presentation, but I feel like you're buying something that you really can't eat. Let's talk about the ingredients that I have for my short ribs. Now I want you to remember that this is a basic recipe for short ribs. It's a simple one. There's not a ton of different flavors in here and you can jazz this up and play with it however you want it. Uh, but what I wanted to do with this video is give you a basic recipe and a basic technique that you can take off on and do different things with, okay? So this is what I got. I have about four pounds of boneless short ribs, um, a bay leaf, some dry thyme, I just dried it out myself, it's still on the sprig and I leave it on the sprig. Tomato paste, onions, carrots, celery, garlic, red wine, beef broth or veal stock, and of course, a little bit of bacon fat. And these are just, like I said, the basic ingredients. So let's get to it and start cooking. The first thing I'm gonna do in any braise that I make is I'm gonna brown my meat. Uh, this caramelizes the meat and gives us a really nice kind of roasty flavor. So let's start by doing that. I'm gonna season with salt and pepper um, fairly liberally. I usually don't season the meat until I'm ready to sear it off. Just for the fact that when you put salt on meat, it tends to draw out moisture, and moisture a lot of times will inhibit browning. So we want this to be nice and brown, okay? So season both sides. Generous salt pepper. Don't be shy. You get a nice kind of brown crust on it. It's actually delicious. I'm gonna take my bacon fat. It's gonna go into my pot. Melt it. One thing you wanna be careful about here is not to overcrowd your pan, right? For the most part, I don't wanna put all of these in at once. I just wanna put in a few just to start getting them brown. See, I hear a nice sizzle. I'll probably have to just put five in to start, but I wanna get brown on all sides. One thing about this technique is that once you know the technique, you don't necessarily need a recipe. I tell this to my students all the time. Once you have the technique down, the recipe is totally up to you, like what you want to put in and the flavors you want to put in. Technique is probably the most important thing here. Brown your meat. Takes a little while, takes some time, 
but I promise you the end result's gonna be delicious. They're getting nice and brown, we're just gonna keep turning them until they're seared all over, okay? If you were just to take this meat and throw it in a pot and braise it, I'm sure that it would be okay, but we want to develop layers of flavor. Layers of flavor is what makes chefs and home cooks a little different. Chefs take the time to do stuff like this in order to make this taste that much better. I'm gonna take these out, put them aside, reserve them, and I'm gonna cook the vegetables. Our fat's nice and hot. We just took our short ribs out. I'm gonna add the onions. And again, I'm talking about layers of flavor. I'm gonna get these a little brown. I'm gonna get the vegetables all a little brown at this point, okay? I'm gonna hit the onions with a little bit of salt just to draw out some of the moisture. Just remember, this is the technique, right? We brown our ribs, brown our vegetables. Second step, really easy. I'm gonna add my garlic, my carrots and my celery. What I love about this as well is the one pot meal. When you're cooking the meat, there's a lot of stuff that caramelizes to the bottom of the pot. That's called the fond, F-O-N-D. And that's a really great foundation for most braises and stews. But what's gonna help flavor our, our braise are those little bits and pieces of meat and juice. Now my vegetables are getting a little bit brown. Uh, I'm gonna add tomato paste. Now, I'm gonna add tomato paste because I want this to get a little body from it. Tomato paste is gonna make my sauce a little thick. It's gonna give it a little acidic note. It's gonna give it a little depth of flavor. So I'm gonna add this. And then I'm gonna do a technique called pincage or pincé. And I'm just gonna get the tomato paste just a little bit toasty brown. Just to cook some of the raw flavor out of it and just to get a little brown color. Mix it in, stir it in. It helps if you have a little bit of fat in there because fat is flavor. Okay, I'm just gonna let it toast a little. I'm gonna add my thyme now and my bay leaf just to start kind of getting some of the flavors out of them. So once I smell that my tomato paste is getting a little toasty, I'm gonna do something called deglazing and I'm using red wine for this. Deglazing is when you have that fond or those things that kind of stick to the bottom of the pan, you're gonna add some sort of liquid to lift those off the bottom of the pan, right? And to get them to be part of your liquid. I'm using wine, you can use beer, you can use just some broth or stock. All the wine goes in. And I'm gonna cook the wine until I can't smell any alcohol, right? You can see that I already have the makings of a sauce. The tomatoes kind of thicken the red wine a little. I'm gonna just add my short ribs in. Nestle them into my vegetables. Get them in there. I really don't want them touching. Right, nestle them into the vegetables. The spoon can go aside. Any juices that kind of come out, you want to put those juices in, okay? Take my beef stock and just go about two thirds to three quarters of the way up. I don't want them totally submerged, right? Hit it with a bunch of seasoning right now. Salt and pepper, be generous. Two ways you can do this. You can leave it on the stove covered uh, and cook it on the stove and let it bubble away happily. I think that the better way to do this is to have an oven on. I have a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. Once it comes to a simmer, I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna put it in the oven until it's cooked, right? And it's a slower, gentler cooking, right? That I like better. Uh, I'm not worried about the sauce reducing too much. A lot of times if you have it on the stove, the sauce can reduce, you might have to add more liquid. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it in the oven, let it cook until my meat is tender. And what I'm looking for is fork tender. Fork tender means that I can stick the fork in and pull it apart with a little bit of resistance. A lot of people when they do braises and stews overcook them and yes, you can overcook them. The meat, if you overcook it, gets really soft and shreds really easy and for the most part it's dry. So we're at a light simmer right now. I'm gonna take the lid, put the tight fitting lid on. If you don't have a lid, aluminum foil works really well. I'm gonna put it in a 350 degree oven until it's done. How long is that, chef? Well, I don't know. Uh, each cut of meat is gonna be a little bit different. You have to go in once in a while and test it and see where you're at. So let's get this in the oven and come back when it's ready. All right, our short ribs have been in the oven for about two hours 
at 350 and look at them, they're beautiful. Super tender, but not falling apart. And this is the key here, okay? If I stick my fork in, it falls off the fork fairly easy. I want it to kind of slip off the fork if I give it a little shake. If it's not done, it's gonna hold on to that fork because the meat isn't cooked. If I also take a piece too and I pull it, it kind of falls apart, but I have to actually give it a little bit of a pull. It doesn't just shred. That's what I'm looking for. That is the test for fork tender. I think this is perfect. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna strain the sauce, degrease it, take some of the fat off, and plate this up. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the sauce off. I'm just gonna put it through a fine mesh sieve. Now, with braised items like this, I always find that they're better the next day if they get to sit. So there's a little fat on the top here that I'm gonna try and skim off. I just get a ladle and skim off as much as fat as I can. I put this on an angle and get off as much fat as I can. Let's put the short ribs back in. We have our strained sauce. At this point, before you put the short ribs back in, if you wanted to thicken this, right? You can thicken this sauce. You can use a roux, you can use a burmani, which is butter and flour. You can use cornstarch and water, but for the most part, I like the way the, the texture is of the sauce. And that's it, that's our short ribs. I wanna recap though. So this is a technique, okay? And for any cut that is kind of tough, you can use this same technique. So the first thing we did is found the tough cut of meat like a short rib. We seasoned it, we browned it. After we browned it, we took it out of the pot. Uh, we put some vegetables in, browned the vegetables. We put a little tomato paste in, browned that. We deglazed the fond, which is that stuff, the nice uh, little bits on the bottom with some wine. Once the wine was cooked out, we added everything back into the pot. We added our stock. We let it come to a simmer, put a lid on it, and put it in an oven. And that is the technique. This is our finished short rib. I have a little bit of the jus or the, or the braising liquid on there that I strained. The short rib, I'm gonna use a fork. I'm just gonna kinda cut it with the fork. It's not necessarily shredding, but it pulls apart really easy. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Tender. Um, still has a little chew to it, um, the, it kind of melts in your mouth. It's absolutely delicious. And if you learn this technique, there's so many different things you can braise. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like, subscribe, hit the little bell, get notified when we have new videos out. Check out our merch down below in the description. I want to thank all our patrons on Patreon for, for helping us out and helping us do what we love doing, learning how to cook, teaching how to cook, and eating well. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.